All right, this video is going to basically talk you through the Sniper short story by Liam O'Flaherty. Um, there's a lot of common misunderstandings and misconceptions about the story, so I just wanted to clear those up and show you the evidence from that in the text. So um, to begin, it's twilight, so you know, sunset, starting to get dark out. We're in Dublin, this is the setting. So Dublin is a city in Ireland, okay? And we are in the middle of a civil war between two groups, the Free Staters and the Republicans. Not Republicans like you think of um, in United States government and politics, um, but you have two different groups waging a civil war against each other in Dublin, Ireland, okay? Our main character, uh, he does not have a name. He just is known as the Republican sniper or the sniper. Um, and he is on top of a roof. He's eating, and then he decides he wants to smoke a cigarette. Um, as usual, that is a bad idea. He lights the match, and with it starting to get dark outside, it is very easy for someone to see that light from far away. And someone shoots at him almost immediately. All right, They miss, but he is shot at. Someone knows where he is at. So he is dealing with that. And then also, to make matters worse, an armored car, so something like a tank, um, came across the bridge and is on the street. So is this a good guy or a bad guy? We do not yet know. Um, then we hear it is an enemy car. So this is not good for our main character. All of a sudden, around the corner becomes an old woman. We do not know what side of the civil war that she is on until she begins to talk to the people running the armored car and it is determined she is an informer so she's on the other side she is not on the side of our sniper because she is telling them where our sniper is at so he can be killed so the turret opened this is like a some sort of gun on the armored vehicle it opened it's shooting um, a man's head and shoulders appeared, looking toward the sniper. The sniper raised his rifle and fired, so the sniper shoots his gun at the man working the armored vehicle. And he hits him. The head fell heavily on the turret wall. The woman ran towards the side of the street. The sniper fired again. The woman whirled around and fell with a shriek into the gutter. So we can infer that this means that the woman was also shot, okay? Suddenly, from the opposite roof, a shot rang out, and the sniper dropped his rifle. I am hit. So he has been shot, not by the armored tank, but by the person that was originally shooting at him when he lit the match, an enemy sniper. Um, so he is hit. He's hit in his arm, and he cannot really feel it. Like, he can no longer control his arms. This is not good. He is in lots of pain. Um, he doctors the wound, so he tries his best to, to fix his arm, um, but he is still in a lot of pain. At this point, the armored car has retreated. It is out of the way. Um, the machine gunner's head hang, hanging lifelessly over the turret, so that means he killed the machine gunner on the armored car. And the same thing with the woman. Her corpse, which is a dead body, lays in the gutter. So he killed both of those people in an effort to keep himself safe. Um, the sniper decides, all right, well, I have to do something. If I stay up here until morning, it's going to be really easy for someone to find me. Um, and I also have to kill the enemy sniper. Like He's going to get me one way or another if I don't get him first. But my arm is not working. I can no longer shoot my, my sniper rifle with one arm. That is just not going to work. So all I have is a revolver. That is the only thing that I am going to be able to use to try and defeat my enemy here. So our sniper comes up with a clever plan. He takes off his hat and he puts it over the muzzle of his rifle, kind of like over the ledge on the top of the roof, okay? Then he pushed the rifle slowly upward over the parapet, over the side, until the cat was visible from the opposite side of the street Almost immediately, there was a shot, and a bullet pierced the center of the hat. So the hat is empty. He's not wearing it. He's making it look like he is out in the open, but really it's just his stuff, okay? The sniper slanted the rifle forward. The cap clipped down into the street. 
Then, catching the rifle in the middle, the sniper dropped his left hand over the roof and let it hang lifelessly. After a few moments, he let the rifle drop. He sank to the roof, dragging his hand with him. So now he is out of view, and the enemy sniper thinks, right here, the Rusik succeeded. The other sniper, seeing the cap and rifle fall, thought that he had killed the man. So our sniper has tricked his enemy into thinking that he has shot and killed him. Now the enemy is standing on the other side of the street. He is out in the open because he thinks that he has defeated his enemy. He is no longer in danger. Our sniper then takes his revolver, takes his time, steadies his arm, makes the shot, and shoots his enemy from across the street. Uh, he hits him. The body turns over and over in space and then hits the ground. So he is shot on the roof and then falls to the street below. And then he lays still. You would think the sniper, our main character, would be excited, but he is not. The lust of battle died in him. He became bitten by remorse. Remorse is a feeling of regret. All right. He does not feel good. He feels bad for killing this enemy. All right. He curses the war. He curses himself. He curses everybody. So this changes our character's point of view. He no longer um, is making the most of war. He, he now resents the fact that he is at war and that he has to do this. He does not like doing this anymore. This event has changed him. So he's killed the enemy. He's getting ready to leave. He is still in danger. So he needs to leave under, under the blanket of darkness um, so he cannot be seen. So he's leaving the roof and he's going to look for his company, the rest of the people in his, in his, uh, on his side. As he's leaving, he feels curious. He's like, wow, I wonder who that enemy was. He was a good shot. Now we need to remember, this is a civil war. Both sides are from the same place, fighting over the same place. So there's going to be people on different, on different sides that know each other because of either where they're at or what they believe, they know each other, but they're on opposing sides because they're from the same place. So in the end, the sniper darted across the street. Someone is shooting at him from a distance, but he escapes that gunfire. He threw himself face downward beside the corpse of the enemy. The machine gun stopped. Then the sniper turned over the dead body of the man he shot and looked into his brother's face. So think for a second, what does that mean? It's a bit of a plot twist at the end, all right? The enemy sniper was actually our main character's brother. He shot and killed his brother in the Civil War. They were on different sides, but they, they knew each other. They, cared, they may have cared for each other. We don't know anything about their relationship, but they knew each other, and he shot and killed him without knowing it, all right? That's what happens in civil war. People, people know each other on both sides. So definitely a plot twist at the end. All right. So that was kind of a summary of the story, but also pointing out some things that I know many students struggle with. So I hope this was a help to you. Um, if you have any questions, let your teacher know. Otherwise, uh, keep up the good reading and writing.